Hi guys, I'm a little late. I was sewing patches on for my son, Zach. But, it's better late than never, right? Uh-oh, we better get some more yarn in there. Let's switch back to waste yarn. Because we're going to do... I'm going to change yarn. I'm going to pico. Then we're going to hang a hem. And it's going to be a setup bonnet. Since, remember, we're just starting this new machine. And I'm going to make... The edge of this hem, first we're going to switch to waist yarn. Okay. And what I'm going to do, since I was, let's see, last Thursday we were practicing making a heel out of a different color. And so, I am going to, sorry about that, I had to reach in front of the camera. Gonna just change over here to waist yarn and then we're going to Microsoft's a setup on it. But the skill that you're gonna learn is the Pico. Because remember last time we're working on a series for brand new people. Let's see. I'm gonna tie these two together so I don't have to fish that through. Let's see how this is gonna go. I kind of made a little mess over there by that knot. But, we got changed over. I'm bonking my screwdriver every time I go around. Alright, so now, is that one being a turkey? Nope, we've got all our stitches on. I'm going to go, and this is a 72 cylinder, so I'm going to go until needle number 72 is closed. I'm going to cut my yarn. bring it around in front of needle number one now i am my own camera person today oh by the way my name's jamie mayfield and if you're watching live you know you found this on csm supplies but if you didn't find it on csm supplies you might want to go there to check out a whole bunch of great resources so we're going to make the top of this setup bonnet the thing I hate to use, crochet cotton. Now, the reason I'm doing this is twofold. First of all, remember we're just getting to know this old auto knitter. So I don't know if this old auto knitter will even knit this crochet cotton. We might have to re rethink our whole project. All right. So I'm going to go 10 rows, if I can. Now, here's a cheat, but if you're brand new, don't do this, okay? A cheat so I don't have to knit this tail in, or weave the tail in, because on a setup bonnet, for sure, I don't want to have to do finish work. I want to do as little finish work as I can, so I'm going to weave that tail in on the second row. To do a pico i'm going to stop with my yarn carrier at the six o'clock position now you guys are watching from the nine o'clock position so just know that this is my six o'clock position so that i can go over here to needle number one and i'm going to transfer every other stitch to its neighbor now this is where you find the reason i don't like crochet cotton there's no stretch and I'm also trying to do it to where I'm not blocking the shot with my hands. So you guys that know me know that my husband has beehives. Well, I'm having a problem with arthritis in, right in here on my wrist. So see that dot? I said, Jeff. Have you guys ever heard of bee sting therapy? Well, it's supposed to be good for arthritis, but I think I'm terribly allergic to bee stings, so I had them sting me, and the only thing that's happened so far is it's really swollen, 
went through the itching stage. I don't know that it's done any good for my arthritis, but I can't really move it very well because it's so swollen. And poor Jeff, he was trying so hard not to laugh. Now again, what we're doing, this is called a Pico. And what I'm doing is I'm making a row of holes, transferring every other stitch to its neighbor. And as we get around here, you'll see what I do is I lean that needle out, get that stitch in my hook, and put it on the next needle. Now, I always work this half of the needles, which I have one more to do, with my yarn carrier at 6 o'clock. Now I'm going to advance the yarn carrier to midnight, or thereabouts, and I'm going to work the rest of the needles. That way I only have to advance the yarn carrier one time doing this operation. And it helps me to not get lost in where I am and what I'm doing, because you want to do these. I don't want to start over here making holes. I want to do it in succession. And when I transfer this needle to the next stitch, that would be like knit two together. But I'm doing it in such a way that it's going to make a row of holes. Now there's an important thing that I want you guys to look at as soon as I get finished transferring these stitches. See these upside down V's? We want to see that, okay? Because that's what's going to make the hole. And what it's going to do is this bar is the one that we'll be able to use to hang our loops on when we use this as a setup bonnet. So if you're just getting an old machine, just getting to know a machine, a great project to do is a setup bonnet. And there's lots of ways to do a setup bonnet. You can do one of those, the kind with rings, which I don't really particularly find useful. I find them to be more trouble than they're worth. But that's my opinion. And you know what they say about opinions. Okay, so I transferred every other needle, and I want to see these upside down V's all the way around. See right there? That one did not knit, that middle stitch. So I'm going to have to see if I can get the two stitches that are on that needle up over. There's another stitch on that needle. underneath and it's tricky to see even when you're not looking at it on a camera see that one that's underneath there I gotta get that one lifted up too okay now since it's just a setup on it it is way and there we go we've got our upside down base it is way forgiving okay it does not have to be perfect so there's my row of holes and I'm gonna have the same problem over here only this time it was one two three needles that didn't knit so I guess the machine wanted me to demonstrate really why I don't like crochet cotton now Sometimes if you're starting a rib sock, depending on how you start it, crochet cotton works just fine. Oops. I took the, one of those stitches off of there. Double dirty dog you. Alright. Now maybe I can get it up over. Both those stitches. And the reason it's given me trouble is that crochet cotton has no 
give. There's no stretch. And so when a stitch doesn't knit, you lift the stitch off of the needle and up and over. But since there's no stretch here, there we go, we got it. It's making it difficult. Now, once I get this one up and over, I want to show you something. Remember I said you got to look for those upside down V's? A lot of times, see right here where there's no upside down V? Can you see that? Yes, you can. It doesn't look like the rest. So we need to make an upside down V over that. Okay? And now, on this side, I'm back to past needle number one. So, I'm going to go 10 more rows. So I went 10 rows, a row of holds, 10 rows. I'm going to stop at the 6 o'clock position. Now, I noticed that this needle did not knit. This one right here. Since it's just a setup bonnet, I'm going to make sure and see if it knits this time or if it's going to cause me a problem. So that's two, three, four, five, six, eight, Thus proving I can count. Well, the 10 anyway. So now I'm going to remove all the weight. I had heel forks on here from when we were doing a practice heel the other day. And I put those down on the ground because they're sharp and they will hurt me. Okay, I'm going to take the buckle and the weight off. And I'm going to hang the hem. Now, remember when we had two yarns knitting on the first stitch? Okay. That stitch was right here by this tail of yarn. Now, we, we would have had two tails hanging down, but remember I cheated and knitted that tail in so I wouldn't have to weave it in when I was finished with my project. Now, again, I make this look very easy, but it's not. What I want you to see is, do you see how I'm folding it up against the cylinder? All right, so we know that this loop right here is number one. So I find my number one needle, and I just lift it on. I do not pull it, because the harder I pull this yarn right here, it makes the next guy disappear. It pulls that one, too. So what I'm going to do is just carefully lay these stitches over, and boy, if you thought that when we do this first row of two stitches, it's going to be ugly. So we're going to try to switch to wool yarn for the rest of the waist. waist Blah. Let me try that one again. We're going to switch to wool yarn as soon as we can for the rest of the setup on it. Because basically, after we get this hem hung, we are scot-free on the setup on it. Now, a lot of people like short setup bonnets and they sew a ring to the bottom of them. A lot of people like setup bonnets that are open at the other end so they can make toe-up socks and use a soft weight. And some people like them gathered at the bottom. If you're going to make, if, if you know that you're interested in trying toe-up socks, you're going to need to make this setup bonnet be an open end. Now, on this channel, this free YouTube channel, there is a another video it's called a back stitch bind off so we will make this one of those fun setup bonnets that's open at the bottom you know the open kind there we go all right now i've worked this half of the stitches plus a couple extra the stitch the needles that are right here they're going down into the cylinder I'm not going to fool with trying to get a stitch on one that's down in the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand down here because if I pull down with the weight, 
I only have pull down on the stitches that are hung. Okay, see how there's only pull down on those stitches. I'm going to crank forward. Now, I have to get my hand in the shot so that I can crank with this hand. And as soon as I get to stitch number one, I'm going to pull down hard. There we go. That wasn't so bad. That way, I can finish hanging all the rest of these stitches. Now, I want to point out to you guys that there's a, a website called SockTV.TV. And we do the very same things here on SockTV as we're doing right here. But SockTV has five HD cameras pointing on the project at all times. And a grumpy old man operating them. But if I want you to see something, you can see it very clear. So check out Sock TV. You can watch it free on Fridays. We film live every Friday morning. Ron and I are in town. We haven't been going anywhere these past few months. to my last one which is right there now I don't need to do well I want to complete this right here and I'm holding down pretty pretty hard so I'm gonna get over here so you guys can see how I'm gonna change over to project yarn so I'm gonna hang my buckle and hang my weight from my buckle remember a buckle goes on right side up then you turn it upside down so it doesn't slip. And hang my weights. I hope nobody has questions. If they do, if they're asking questions, I hope somebody else is answering. Okay. Well, let me get it back around one more time. That's the beauty of a setup on it. I have to follow a pattern. I'm going to cut the yarn and let this tail fall outside of the cylinder now i'm going to bring in this way cute yarn that i sell at csm supplies it's called smarties i have quite a few cones of it in stock if you guys end up liking what you see now, when you hang that hem, it's very, very important that your waist yarn is highly contrasting from your project yarn. Okay. Now, I have to get my pick tool. I'm just going to use the back end of this latch hook tool. No, I'm not because it won't fit in that hole. Let's see. Where is my pick tool? Oh, here it is. It fits in the hole. That's why I like this kind of pick tool, because it fits where you need it to. Okay, then I'm going to knit the two yarns together for the length of the white tail. Okay, and this way, then I'm starting on the body of my setup on it. Now, I think I'm going about 60 rows, but I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. 
Only thing that you need to remember is that if you're making a setup on it that's going to be open at the other end, you need a long setup on it. So now, since we want this to be open at the other end, we're going to make some more holes. So here's needle number one, and I have 72 stitches. Let's see. I can't see that. Okay, um, I transferred needle number one. Now, 72 divides by, is it nine times eight, 72? I think so. So we're gonna go, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna make a hole right here at number eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one will be transferred to its neighbor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Transfer this one to its neighbor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Transfer this one to its neighbor. Okay. Now I've worked this half. I'm going to go to midnight. Remember, I want to see the upside down V's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Transfer this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Transfer, no, transfer this one. Um, on a setup bonnet, it, if you make a mistake and transfer the six or the ninth, it's not going to kill you. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we should have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have six. My math was a little off. That's not the first time, and I can guarantee it won't be the last. Okay, we've got our row of holes. Okay, we've gone about 20 more rows. Now, I want to switch back to waste yarn. And you'll notice I'm on this white and I'm on the orange. So it's gray and white on this side and it's orange on this side. So let's go another row. Now it's going to be green. I'd like to have all one color stitches. There we go. That way I can pick what color waste yarn is going to be highly contrasting with this green yarn. Okay, now at the end of this, we're going to have to back stitch bind off, which is we're going to sew it. Um, you could also latch hook it off right now, but I'm not going to do that. You're going to, I'm going to sew an ending on this. Otherwise, I'm going to have live stitches. Okay, but to sew a back stitch bind off, we need to cut a tail. I know this looks weird, doesn't it? that goes around the cylinder at least three times. So that's how long I'm gonna cut my tail. Then I'm gonna drag all that yarn back around, get it organized. Okay, now let's make sure Needle, the last needle has closed, needle number 72. And we're going to pull it around through in front of the first needle. So I need something that's going to contrast with the green, and I think that orange will contrast nicely with it. This is why it's good to have a couple different colors of waist yarn. Because it is no fun trying to sew your backstitch bind off if you can't tell what's what. So I'm going to make both yarns knit on needle number one. Start knitting and put that tail down in there. And I'm going to knit about 20 rows. And I'm going to remove the project from the machine. Do you see this guy right over here? Didn't knit. That's about the 10th time. 
So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to file that needle in a very special place. Now, it could be bad from before. I don't think I heard it this time, but a few days or a couple weeks ago, we were kind of having problems with needles and bending latches. Oh, and so you know what I did? This is a good learning opportunity. You can't tell it, but I can see it. This needle is not for this type of machine. It's longer. Okay? There's the Gerhardt style machines use a longer needle. I need a shorter needle. Now you notice it was knitting just fine, but it kind of made a funny row of stitches. So let's see if I did better this time. Oh yeah, there we go. So now I'm just gonna cut the project. I'm going to grab the whole project like a chicken by its neck. And I'm not going to pull down really hard. I'm just going to hold it there. And I'm going to crank forward with a purpose. And we have made a setup on it. Let's take a look at what we made. So there you go. There is our Pico Edge. Okay. Now, in between these, you see that one right there? That'll be the first one that we hang. Okay? And this is why I like the non-forgiving, non-stretching. See how, it, I mean, I didn't even put any pressure on there, and those loops want to stay up. Okay? That's why I like crochet cotton for the edge of a setup on it. All right. And let's move on down here. See, we have our row of holes. And next Tuesday, I'm going to show you guys how to make I-cord on the machine so that we can thread it through these holes and we can have an I-cord tie that it, when we put our soft weight down into this setup bonnet, we can untie it and take our weight out. It'll be fun. You guys will love it. All right. I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I will see you on Thursday at the CSKMS website. And then I'll see you on Friday morning at CS... CS... No. CSM Supply... No, Sock TV on Friday. I didn't see that question. What's it say? Thanks, Jamie. Smarty sure is cute. Thanks, Jamie. Ha! It is cute yarn, isn't it? Look at it. I just love that yarn. All right. Over and out. Until next time.